Well, see, you're not under the law. No, it's saying, really, if you are living the fullness of the spirit of the law, all of the attributes of the law that we've been talking about, then in other words, no one can, no one can accuse you because you're living blameless. You're living in right standing with God. If you're doing all that the Lord has instructed you to do, no one can accuse you. Satan can't accuse you. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Here we go. Here's the list. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envyings. I'm jealous of that other person. Murders, drunkenness, revelings, and the such. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, something that so many people full of pride and haughtiness don't ever think about. Temperance, tolerance. Against such, there is no law. So in other words, if you are loving, if you are creating joy, if you are creating peace, if you are long-suffering, in other words, you're patient, gentle, goodness, faith, you're meek, against such there is no law. That's precisely what I said. It's not about, it's not saying, no, there are no commandments. It's saying, but if you are walking in the Spirit, then you are following the commandments. If you are loving your neighbor as you love yourself, then you are following the commandments. You are following the preeminent laws that Jesus, that Jesus spoke about. Love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. How do you do that? In love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And if you're doing that, no one can accuse you. No one can point at you. And if you think about it in reverse, would you be guilty if you were in court? And you've probably heard this little saying before. But if you were in court, could, would you be found guilty of being loving, being patient, being peaceful, being kind, being good, being faithful? having self-control, temperance, gentleness, meekness. Would you be found guilty of that? Is, that? is that how people would characterize you? Is that how people have come to know you? Are we keeping in step with this spirit? Or are we walking against this spirit? And finally in verse 24, or not I shouldn't say finally. And they that are Christ, they that are of Christ, they that are Christ, now those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have been crucified. Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh which with its passions and desires. So he's put an end to those. If we're walking in accordance with his will, according to his commandments, and as we do that, through the help of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the demands of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, the passions, hatred, greed, lust, covetousness, jealousy, all those start to diminish. They, 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 they are crucified. They're killed off. 
So 25, if we live by the spirit, let us also walk by the spirit. Let us not become, and, and, and this is what I love about the scriptures and often what you see in the Bible. Whenever something is repeated, it's kind of like a hyperbole. If something is repeated several times, that means there is something important about that. They're trying to make a, trying to make a point to you. So verse 26, says, let us not be desirous. Let us not become boastful challenging one another and envying one another walk by the spirit if we live by the spirit let us walk by the spirit this is just as clear as i said basic basically it's biblical my friends this has been just a wonderful experience. I hope that you have um, uh, been blessed by what we have been uh, talking about today. Our learning in, in more depth about what God's will is, what God's way is, and how can we be in step with him? How can we become more like him? How can we go back to that original state? How can we get back to that original state? Instead of moving away from the womb, the Garden of Eden, how can we move back into right relationship with God? It's through our worship. What does our worship look like? How we act. Do we love God? If we love God, are we keeping his commandments, loving one another, feeding the hungry, giving to the poor, and clothing, going to visit those in prison, those in the hospitals, giving someone just a glass of water? Not some big, highfalutin, long, drawn-out, traditions-based, doctrines-based idea. Very simple, very basic. Uh, next week, we will continue to look at how uh, these very actions, uh, most, most time people think, oh, this stuff is just so hard. It's hard to follow the law. It's hard to follow the commandments of God. It's hard. Well, yes, it is a struggle because we are still humans. We are in our we're still we're in this fleshly body and we're warring against those desires, uh, those passions. But as we continue to walk in the spirit, we get stronger. Just like just like when we talked about uh, the patterns, it's about practicing those patterns, knowing what the patterns are, knowing what the characteristics are. You have to know them before you can do them, but you have to practice them before you can become perfect. Not just being a hearer of the word, but being, being a doer of the word. So we're going to look further into uh, how we've been given the wrong idea about uh, judgment, chastisement, uh, the commandments. Because again, Satan sets out to cause us doubt and to dispute the word of God. I, I, I love you and I'm so glad that you have joined me. Uh, and I, I, I look forward to our future studies together. And I praise God. I just give praise to God that we have we've come this far and have shared so much. I hope this study has been a blessing to you and um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. Until next week, be blessed.